In this video, we're going to use the conservation of mechanical energy and the work energy theorem to look at an example where a cart falls from the top of a ramp and stops under the influence of a friction force. So the cart is going to start at the top of this ramp, which is at a height h above the ground, and at the top of that hill, the cart is going to have zero speed. In this problem, the, the incline that the cart slides down is frictionless, so the coefficient of friction between the cart and the track is zero. And so when the cart gets to the bottom of the ramp, it will have a speed v. And what I'd like to do is break this problem down into two parts. The part where uh, the cart starts at the top of the ramp and ends at the bottom of the ramp where the mechanical energy of the cart earth system will be conserved due to the fact that there's no friction force and then the second part being the flat section of the ramp where the cart starts with a speed V and eventually stops comes to rest at the end of the track after traveling a distance D due to the friction force so let's start by writing a conservation of mechanical energy equation for the cart earth system from starting where it starts at the top of the hill and ending where it's at the bottom of the hill. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the energy, the mechanical energy at the top of the hill equal to the mechanical energy at the bottom of the hill. At the top of the hill, the cart earth system has gravitational potential energy and if the cart has a mass m then the amount of gravitational potential energy that it has at a height h is mgh and by the time that cart gets to the bottom of the hill 100 percent of the mechanical energy uh, is now going to be kinetic energy so mgh equals one half mv squared and so what I'd like to do is solve for the speed that the cart has at the bottom of the hill. The mass on both sides of the equation cancels, and I get the speed is equal to the square root of 2 times g times the initial height of the cart. Next, what I'd like to do is apply the work energy theorem to the second part of the problem where a friction force acts on the cart causing its kinetic energy to change from one-half mv squared to zero over a distance d. And so in that case, we know that there is work done by that friction force and the work that the friction force does changes the kinetic energy by an amount delta k. So the work done by the friction force that acts on the cart would be equal to the force that is acting on the cart times the distance over which that, that force is acting on the cart times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. And so it's important to recognize that if I'm drawing the cart again here, we recognize that the displacement of the cart is in this direction, but the friction force acting on the cart is to the left. So if I label the friction force lowercase letter f, we can see that the displacement of the cart is to the right and the friction force is to the left, and so the angle between those two vectors is 180. And the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So the friction uh, force does an amount of work that's equal to minus FD. And that work is equal to the change in the kinetic energy of the cart. So the final kinetic energy of the cart, because it comes to rest at the end, is zero. And the initial kinetic energy of the cart is one half mv squared. And so we should see that the minus signs cancel and the friction force that's exerted on the cart as it slides to a stop is given by mv squared divided by 2d. I would like to analyze this problem a little bit further by 
first substituting in the expression for the velocity into the expression uh, for the uh, friction force acting on the cart and then I'd like to solve that equation for the coefficient of friction acting on the cart so first what I'll do is I'll write F equals M times V squared but instead of V squared I'm going to plug in the square root of 2GH squared which is just 2GH divided by 2D and so this will simplify to uh, the twos will cancel right to just MGH over D and then instead of writing the friction force as F I would like to plug in uh, an expression for the friction force which is true while the cart is on the horizontal section of track and that is the friction force would be equal to the coefficient of friction in that segment of the track times the normal force acting on the cart and because the cart is on a horizontal section of track the normal force that acts on the cart pointing up would be equal to the weight of the cart which would be mg and so the friction force acting in the cart can be written as mu times mg and so mu mg should be equal to mgh over d so mu mg is equal to mgh over d and here we should see that the mg on both sides of the equation cancel leaving us with the coefficient of friction being equal to the initial height of the cart h divided by the stopping distance d and I think this is a simple but important relationship between the coefficient of friction on that track the initial height of the cart and the stopping distance of the cart